San Diego is known for its military presence, and now the city is formally opposing President Trump's decision to limit service by transgender people. This afternoon, the city council voted to approve the symbolic resolution. President Trump announced the policy two years ago, but it did not take effect until April. It reverses President Obama's 2016 policy that allowed transgender people to serve openly. You can find... From the creators of Incoming, a platform that gives veterans an opportunity to tell their stories through live performances, publications, a podcast, and a radio show you can hear on KPBS, comes a new anthology, Sex, Drugs, in Copenhagen, a first-hand look at military life. Joining us now is Justin Hudnall, the executive director of So Say We All. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So how does Sex, Drugs, in Copenhagen differ from other stories about veterans? So our first anthology uh, focused on the experience of veterans coming home and transitioning back into civilian life. And we wanted to make our second book something that no one had ever read in the world of veteran literature before. Um, veterans are so often portrayed in media as either victims, villains, or heroes, uh, none of which really exist in real life as like full-bodied characters. So we wanted to do a collection that was all about the dark and weird and funny and shocking moments that come from waiting. And waiting really makes up so much of a service person's career that it would be uh, remiss not to point it out. So uh, sex, drugs, and Copenhagen, the chewing tobacco, not the place in Europe, is uh, what we went for because everybody picks up bad habits of one kind or another to get through it. And when you talk about, about waiting, that's something that you don't really hear a lot of discussion about. Why is that such a, a big part of military life? Because uh, the military is part of the government, and the government's not known for efficiency in all things. And when you step outside of Hollywood, there is a lot of standing around, waiting for orders, waiting for people to figure out what's going on, um, waiting to figure out if you're going to go to war. You, you mentioned that veterans could find the humor in their experience. Do you think that telling your story or writing your story helps with that? Oh, absolutely. I think that uh, humor is really the spoonful of sugar that makes the medicine go down with a lot of dark subject matter. And contrary to maybe the perception, I think veterans are some of the funniest people I know and get to work with because it's such a necessity to be able to laugh in the face of fear and uncertainty, um, danger. And it's the darkest humor I know, but it's also, I think, the most necessary kind of humor. And I think that um, sometimes that can come off as a little shocking or off-putting, but I definitely think it's the most honest. And so humor and uh, veteran literature really do go hand in hand. And So Say We All gives veterans an opportunity to share their stories with live performances, books, mm -hmm. um, also the radio show and the podcast. What's the ultimate goal of giving veterans a, a platform to tell their stories? I think it's twofold. One, I think civilians really have a yearning to understand who their military is. Um, so few of us actually ever serve, and within even that tiny body, so few ever actually see combat. Um, and yet it makes up such a huge part of American uh, diplomacy, for lack of a better word, uh, that I think we really do need to, to use the cliche, bridge that gap a little bit better. And I hope that this series helps uh, us do that. And on the other hand, I also think that veterans deserve to be heard as fully formed people and as artists, full stop, who also happen to be veterans. And so um, this is an opportunity to really show a side that uh, the stereotypes, n th this is real, excuse me. This is really an opportunity for us to defy stereotypes and let veterans present themselves as they want to be seen, uh, rather than just being talked about, which, uh, which sucks. <laughs> What's the experience like reading this anthology? I think the experience is going to be really one of surprise, primarily. Um, there has been no forum to let veterans talk about this subject matter, to really let them focus on the funny and surreal and absurd aspects of their career. Um, and I hope that it really invites more curiosity about just what actually goes on in a service person's career and what uh, is really entailed when you join the military that the recruiter doesn't tell you about. And where can people find the book? You can find this book on Amazon, uh, and you can find it in San Diego's best independent bookstore, Verbatim Books. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can find tonight's stories on our website kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.